Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the February 1st regular City Council meeting of the City of Bel Air Beach. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Robin Aki. Here. Council Member Marv Beam. Here. Council Member Dave Gaddis. Here. Council Member Jody Shirley. Here. Council Member Rita Swope. Here. Vice Mayor Glenn Gunn. Here. Mayor Joseph Manzo. Here. City Manager Lynn Reeves. Here. City Attorney Fred Riley. Here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dave Gaddis and Rita Slope are appearing telephonically for the record. First item of business is the approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? So Mark B makes the motion. Second. Second. Governor Shirley. Any comments? Any citizen comments? Back to council. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Unanimous. Agenda passes as is. Next we have citizen comments, folks. We have three minutes for you to uh, speak with us. If you uh, will come to this podium here, please give us your name and address. Um, and uh, please observe our code of conduct if you, uh, if you choose to address us tonight. Would anyone like to speak to the council? I see no hands, so I will close citizen comments. I will move to the Pinellas Sheriff. Are you, uh, Jesse, two sheriff's officers? Is someone ready to make a presentation tonight, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sheriff? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Corporal Duncan with the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. I'm also assigned to the city squad. Um, I think you said it once before, Mayor, no news, no news is good news. Um, short of a couple DUIs and a couple minor larceny complaints, the city is quiet as a mouse. Um, I would like to take a moment to introduce Robert Ferguson. He is the deputy that is going to be working evening shift out here, where uh, Deputy Maldonado was. They switch Deputy Maldonado's across the bridge now in Bel Air Bluffs. So we're very happy to have Deputy Ferguson filling his spot. So if you guys have any issues or concerns, by all means, please reach out to Deputy Ferguson. If you see him driving through the neighborhood doing his area checks or out uh, doing traffic control and, and closing up the parks or anything like that. Welcome, Deputy. Thank you. Welcome to Delaware Beach. Anybody have any questions for the sheriff? Sheriff, I have a comment. Um, doesn't get any better than zero. Congratulations. That is excellent, outstanding. And it's not just the last month. Um, I just came in here and sitting on my table, so I haven't had a chance to even read it through fully, um, is a letter from Sheriff Goltieri to me. I'm just going to read the first paragraph for everyone because I think it says all you need to know. And it says, Dear Mayor Manzo, I'm writing to provide you a summary of reported crime in Beller Beach over the past 10 years, and I'm pleased to tell you that crime decreased in Beller Beach by 42% between 2010 and 2019. Um, and he has a chart on the back here, and I didn't really analyze all of this, so I don't know if the cameras can see it, but this chart is heading south, and that's the way you want to see it. Outstanding job, gentlemen, outstanding job, and I also thank our citizens always, too, because they're your eyes when you're not around to let you know that something might be going on. So Absolutely. great job with the, with the citizen patrols, keeping everyone advised, and great job on the follow-up. And I mean, it, it's great. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any uh, citizen comments for the sheriff? Yes, sir. Mr. Hansing. Sheriff, we'll just have you step slightly to the side. You can use that mic, and then you can come back and use it. John Hansing. 103 22nd Street. It's not generally for the sheriff, sir. It's a point of information. I couldn't hear hardly anything the sheriff was saying. I would ask that when speaking, speak directly into the microphone so we can hear you in the back of the room, please. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think it is, but you gotta, you gotta be like right on top of it, an inch away. Any other comments for the sheriff? Sheriff, thank you very much again. Great job, outstanding. Please, let, uh, give the sheriff, I'll, I'll run, I'm gonna reach out to Sheriff Goldberry on this personally, but um, it's just really excellent. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we have the Planning and Zoning Board um, Code Review Progress Report, and this is uh, to get some feedback from the council, seek any guidance or assistance if needed. Do we have someone for Planning and Zoning? I'm Wanda? Here. Yeah, okay, Wanda Schwer. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Wanda Schwer, I'm the Planning and Zoning Board Chair, we reviewed chapters two, which is administration, 10 buildings and building regulations, and 54, which is taxation and finance. We've come to a consensus on all of our recommendations, and uh, we will be providing a full report to the council, I believe, next month. Uh, for details of our discussion and all the consensus, uh, you can refer to the minutes and to the uh, audio tape. Our next meeting will be not this week, but next week. And we'll be reviewing Chapter 30, which is Marine Structures, Activities, and Facilities. And following that in two weeks will be 94 zoning. After that, we will we do our full report to the council. Any questions? Council? When, oh yes, when? Have you run into any issues or points of contention? Not, not really. Um, Lynn has been at every meeting, as has Laura. And any questions we've had, they've been able to respond, so we've had some good discussions there. And I think you'll like some of our recommendations. Look forward to it, thanks. So that should be out for the next meeting? I'm sorry? For our next council meeting for March? Okay. Uh, does anyone in the citizens have any comments for, uh, regarding the planning board code review? Are you waving, or is that a question? Oh, she's just waving. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. I think there's nothing else in council, right? Thank you very much, and our thanks to the uh, to the uh, commission for putting this uh, together. We look forward to the report. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we move into our public hearing now. It's a long, uh, long, it's a short item to vote on, but a short, a long item for description. So I'm going to read it all. It's item number five: consideration of ordinance 21-01, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Bel Air Beach, Florida, providing for for the amendment of Chapter Two boards, committees, and commissions of the city code ordinances related to the creation of the Citizens Advisory Committee, providing for incorporation of recitals, providing for the amendment of Chapter 2 boards, committees, and commissions of the city code of ordinances relating to the creation of a Citizens Advisory Committee, providing for a copy to be kept on file, providing for severability, providing for the repeal of all ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing for an effective date. This is the second reading. This is an ordinance to develop a standing advisory committee for the continuity and expediency, and that's all it says, for continuity and expediency. Do I have a motion? So moved. Glenn Gunn makes the motion. Second. Second by Mark Bean. Discussion? Glenn? No, I think we're just following through on a great idea, and I look forward to uh, getting some great engagement from the residents. Any other council comments? Citizens? Back to council, last word, Glenn. No, call the question. Okay. And so the question before us is consideration of ordinance 21-01, an ordinance of the city council of the city of Bel Air Beach, Florida, providing for the amendment of chapter two boards, committees, and commissions of the city code of ordinances relating to the creation of a citizen's advisory committee, providing for incorporation of recitals, providing for the amendment of chapter two boards, committees, and commissions of the City Code of Ordinances relating to the creation of a Citizens Advisory Committee, providing for a copy to be kept on file, providing for severability, providing for the repeal of all ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing for an effective date. This is the second reading. A yes vote passes this. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Beam. Aye. Councilmember Gaddis. Aye. Councilmember Shirley. Aye. Council Member Swope? Aye. Council Member Aki? Aye. Vice Mayor Gunn? Aye. Mayor Manzo? Aye. So it passes 7 to 0. This is now, the ordinance will now be changed. And we will start advertising for people on this committee. 
This is a fairly two-year committee, so um, it's a good commitment, but it will be a standing committee, so it expects to get some use as we have, uh, you know, after it's staffed up. So I invite all the citizens to um, put their information in and get this thing staffed up as soon as possible. Okay, so now we have the consent agenda. We've got three items on the consent agenda. Items six, seven, and eight, I'm gonna read them. There's no uh, discussion on this other than um, we're going to, uh, to approve it in mass. So first is the approval of the January 4th, 2021 City Council Minutes, that's item six. Item seven is approval of the January 20, 2021 City Council Work Session Minutes. And item eight is approval to award certificates of commendation to outgoing council members in appreciation of their service that was put on by me. Uh, do I have a motion to pass the consent agenda? So moved. I have Mark Beam and second by Jerry Shirley. Madam Clerk, please call the, uh, the roll for passing the consent agenda. So we're going to approve January 4th, 2021 City Council meeting minutes, January 20th, 2021 City Council meeting minutes, and uh, approval of the award certificates of commendation to outgoing council members in appreciation of their service. Mayor, did you want a roll call vote for that or just a, a consensus? We can do a consensus vote. A consensus vote. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? SAS 7 to 0 passes. Those certificates, Patty, will be awarded at the, um, at the, uh, the, the changeover ceremony, the installation ceremony, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're now on our regular agenda. We have consideration of approval for Park and Rec Board events for 2021. This is the um, Park and Recreation Board Chair, Tammy Lavenda. And we have three out four items, Jazz in the Park, Family Picnic, uh, the Halloween Doll Costume Parade and Contest, the Christmas Tree Lighting and Holiday Social, and the Christmas Boat Parade. Is someone here from the Parks and Rec Board? Yes. First, you know what, before I do this, let me get the motion first to, uh, to get this on our, to, for, for hearing this. We have a motion? So moved. Marvin. Uh, you know what? I gave it to you last time, Marvin. I'm going to give it to Jody and Marv. So Jody makes the motion. And Marv is second. We'll defer our comments till after the uh, after the presentation. Go ahead. Um, okay, so our group, we got together and we just kind of brainstormed different ideas. And these were the four that we kind of came up with that everyone liked. And we just wanted to get your, your input, like if you had um, any other suggestions or if you would approve these. So I'm just here for questions in regards to these events. We kind of mapped out the dates. Um, we did a little bit of research, um, but we thought we should get approval before we did too much in, like, into the detail of it. Are you asking for the formal approval of the events tonight with uh, from yes. us? Okay. Mm -hmm. Council questions? Yes, I would like to go ahead and make a few. Um, have you reached out to our citizens yet to get their feedback? Because that's always been very important, and I've been consistent on asking that. Um, also, do you plan on putting together a plan uh, providing safety, COVID uh, protocol, uh, all kinds of different information we're going to need, parking, everything? Has any of that been thought out at this point, or are you going to go after our citizens' uh, feedback first? Well, as you know, it's rather difficult right now to get the um, communications board is trying to get everybody's email. My understanding is we're not allowed to send out an email blast. We only maybe have 120 emails. Um, it's very expensive to do a mass mailing, um, so we can't do it for everything. So what we've done so far, if you look under Parks and Rec on the Beller Beach website, it has my cell phone number, and I'm asking for requests or suggestions because right now the only thing on there is a beach yoga class a boot camp class and then like we call it walk and wine but like we meet here and then we walk over to the walk the bridge and then whatever um, so really at this point if anybody has a suggestion on how to reach out to the citizens we're not allowed to even we were actually going to go and just put flyers in everyone's mailbox you're not allowed it's illegal so any suggestion that anybody could give us to get this out so what our thoughts on this was, because um, I don't think the date was read, but for the Jazz in the Park family picnic for May, um, we would send out like a postcard and then we would put, you know, coming events and then put the other three maybe on the back. As far as like details, 
Um, we talked about it a little bit, but until we got everything approved, we really weren't going to put um, a whole lot of time into it if it was squashed. Like, we did some research on the entertainment as far as the COVID, absolutely. It'll be more like a, um, everyone would bring their own picnic basket and we would provide closed drinks and like sealed dessert bar. So like cookies and cupcakes that are in containers, kind of like they're doing everywhere right now because everybody, the COVID protocol should be pretty easy to find and follow right now because everyone is doing them. So I don't think we're gonna have to, have to do a lot of research as far as that goes because the groundwork has pretty, been pretty much laid out. So we would try to work on getting RSVP and then like have people space out their picnic blankets or their chairs and um, and we would work out the details before, I would say, March or April at the latest. Did I get all your questions? Uh, yes, it does, but I have a couple more. Uh, where are you planning this event at, and is it going to be open to the general public or just Bel Air Beach residents? Well, it would be here, and it would be kind of set up like a wedding would be, and absolutely no, it would just be Bel Air Beach residents. And like I said, we would try to get an RSVP to make sure, like if we are providing non-alcoholic beverages and a dessert bar, that we have enough for everyone that would be in attendance. So, no, it would just be residents. I don't know, if, if a family calls and says, you know, my cousin's in town visiting, I can't really say no, but can people from Beller Shores or Beller Bluffs come? I, no, I wouldn't think they'd want to come to our picnic. So no, it would just be residents. Let me ask you. Okay, and how would you ensure that? Well, I don't think you can. You can't police yeah. that. You're not going to ask for ID, so I don't think that should happen. If, some, if a family happens to come from Bel Air Bluffs, well, then we'll just have to make room and be happy to welcome them. Yeah. But not advertise for other cities to join us, but not also check IDs for citizens. Yeah, I mean, Bell or Beach family picnic, it's pretty clear. It's, you know, it's not a, you know, come one, come all, like, everyone's welcome. Usually those events are pretty pretty advertised that direction. So I would hope that we could make it pretty um, clear just in our invites and on the website and any other way. And I'm hoping, I don't know when the, the board out front is going to get up and going. I know there's a lot of things in flux right now, so... Some of the things we're going to have to work at as we get closer, and those things are completed. Do you have budgets for any of this? Sure. And I, my, my concern is this boat parade, because I know there was research done by the past park board. Mm -hmm. And um, the first thing that caught my eye is that we're doing it the same day as Indian Rocks Beach. And I think that in the past was a problem. The captain who would be leading that parade didn't want it on the same day as Indian Rocks, and Indian Rocks didn't want it the same day as us. So I, I don't know if we're trying, if maybe something has changed, maybe you know more than you can let you know tell us about, but in the past, trying to team up with Indian Rocks or trying to do a joint event wasn't gonna happen, and um, it was pretty expensive, as I remember, very expensive to hire that captain. So I'm just wondering what we're, what we're looking at over here in terms of dollars. Well, and we have our given budget. Um, as far as that goes, that was just a suggestion from someone on the board. Like, this is as much feedback as I've had on that, and considering it's in December, we have, you know, time to research it more. I think her thought, or in like just the consensus of the conversation was, if it's not, it's, you know, they always have it like, what, the Saturday before Christmas. So, you know, if we have it two weeks out and we do it on our own, like, I'm pretty much the last house in Bellar Beach next to Indian Rocks, and they literally turn around in front of my house. We would be going the other direction. As far as the cost on, a captain, when we we discussed the budget that we were given, we kind of blocked it out like a third, and then we knew the boat parade would be expensive, so then a third, and then the other two, or you know, pretty much cost next to nothing. So we, our understanding, unless a boat captain is 6,000 bucks for the night, which I cannot imagine, it will, we would be able to like stay within our budget. The, um, but a lot of details need to be worked out, right. but you know, it's January, and until I knew we were going to get a, a yes, you know, it's, and it could be like where you are saying that like there's issues with legalities or we can't get someone or whatever, then we would just find a different event. The only other comment that I have, well, two things, I, I agree with Rob and Aki. Um, 
In terms of advertising, the newspaper is going to pick up on, once these get approved, they're going to put it in. So if somebody wants to walk here, this has not been historically a problem, so we're solving a problem that isn't a problem. I was at every event. We had a couple visitors, and you know what? That's a good thing. Um, it gives us a chance to showcase our nice city, and I think everybody walked away with a very favorable impression of the city. So I don't, you'll spend more money trying to police it to keep a person out. Now, in terms of giving away um, food and candy bars and stuff like that, that is something you can have the person show an ID. I, I went to Indian Shores uh, Memorial Day picnic, and it was, it's open to everyone, but residents eat free. Um, and if you're not a resident, then you have to pay like, I don't know, eight or ten dollars. It was very reasonable, but they didn't throw, you know, that you weren't going to eat at their expense, so that, that's the way they handle that. But anybody can go if you want to listen to the music and stuff like that. The only other comment I had was, I don't see anything here for children. Um, there's, there's nothing. We had a Halloween parade last time. We had a Christmas uh, time with Santa, and I see now, you know, we've kind of thrown Halloween to the dogs, which is, you know, funny. <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be you know, a cute parade, but maybe we get the kids somehow involved. Oh no, in the kids too. would be involved in that. Okay. But just my understanding is there's 1,400 dogs in Bellar Beach and 12 children, and I'm exaggerating, I know, but like the kids, it would be on the invite that the kids could wear the costumes. I've been to one of these before, and like, you know, sometimes the kids dress up like their dogs or they do like a coat. So there would absolutely be dog treats for the dogs and candy for the kids. The kids are not excluded in any of this. The holiday social would also include, so I just didn't detail every little single thing out on this. And if you need that, I can give it to you. I was just, that was my impression when I saw it. And oh yeah, yeah, no, kids would be included. And we absolutely. do have, we have about 100 kids, so they, they came know, out pretty I, well to our event, so yeah. I know they liked it, and you know, I think somebody was Dorothy and had Toto, so I mean, it, it could all work together, so. Yeah, no, it would definitely, I mean, these are family events, so children are absolutely included in anything that we, we would do. Perfect. Council? I think they look like good ideas, I mean, I'm, I'm supportive and uh, you know I think that there's a way to do the boat parade I you know generally there are residents that decorate their boats participate in the parade mm -hmm. so you maybe have a lead boat that you're paying for but I don't see it being a big expense and I think it's great because like Clearwater Beach has theirs Indian Rocks has theirs and we don't have one it would be nice if we could be if we could team up with someone on the same day so that you'll get more participation yeah, I think it's a good idea. Thank you. I, I, I think they did look into it, but I, I know Indian Rocks wasn't interested, but I mean, Bellar Bluffs is a very logical solution, and that would keep it all up here and everything for us. So, um, you know, I'm prepared to, to call for a vote tonight on this. Um, I think the only thing is we're going to have to get some firm numbers when you, as you're going along here. So we'll say, you know, most likely we'll say, yeah, sure, go ahead. But then I'm going to ask you to come back and update us. So when you have, you know, like, I want to find out that it costs $3,000 for the boat parade. We really should vote on that if they are, give you a second okay if it's going to cost a lot of money. Some of these are inexpensive, so I don't, like, the, the parade and things, that's not a real big deal. So. Okay. Okay? That's fine. That's going to be a problem? Yeah. Well, I would like to ask another question or two. Does um, City Manager Lynn Reeves or Council Member Dave Gaddis have any ideas on how to reach out to the citizens? to see how they feel about it. I've always been consistent on that, and honestly, I'm going to stay consistent on it. So I hear if the citizens want it, I'm not going to be able to give my yes vote. So does uh, City Manager Lynn Reeves or Council Member Dave Gaddis have any ideas on how to reach out to the citizens to find out their uh, feedback and their opinion of it before we even vote on any of this? Uh, I'm sure that we... Uh we can always send out a, a, a mailing, uh, like a, uh, an email version, uh, just asking for a response. It's not that hard. Uh, Lynn? Yeah, uh, Mayor Consul, really, uh, we're in the process, and Patty's going to give you an update on our communication new email uh, system that we're putting together as residents. Turn it in. so. Uh, I think we'll be able to, to do that in a, a more detailed fashion in, in the next month or so, or less. Uh, so we've got, Patty, I think it was 219? Okay, so uh, responses back from our surveys. Uh, I don't feel that these are things that 
or in any way, shape, or form uh, negative to the residents in general. Because I think the city council, uh, based on what I know of it, they they wanted to have a few events. Uh, so uh, these are things. They're not large events. They're they're. It's not like. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of businesses here or something. These are just for the residents. And how we'll notify the residents is through the email system that they put out. And by the time we're lucky, we'll have a sign by May. We'll be able to uh, put it on the sign, the website. And so, so I don't really think it's this, this uh, event list is in any way a negative thing. I think it's a positive thing. And it's focused towards the residents and that's what it's focused at. What? I was wondering, just an idea, is, is this something we could do like management by exception? I mean, maybe just take a half page ad in the newspaper and say, hey, Miller Beach is tentatively planning these events and if you have some strong feelings or ideas, call the city manager or, or our the head of our Park and Recreation Board and give us your ideas or concerns so that we can address them. And uh, I would imagine that's fairly cheap compared to some surveys or postcards or mailers. Maybe just two weeks we take out a half page ad or something. I, I just don't want to see, you know, paralysis and an by analysis here. I think, I think that we could either put it in maybe your next mailing if you want, but I don't see why we can't give them the go ahead tonight to get working on this because this thing made, this jazz in the park, sounds simple. It's not. you got to get your band, you got to get your everything set up and, you know, just spread out for COVID and stuff like this. It's, it's, there's work to be done and you know it. You're nodding and you know that there is, and I do too. Um, so I would like to get you to go ahead uh, tonight. And you have, uh, the other events are October, November, uh, and December. You've got plenty of time. If citizens come through, first off, this, these meetings will, uh, minutes will be published. I like your idea. Maybe get you know get a blast out, or maybe on his next uh, letter to the to the community or something. And people have ideas. I mean, you meet at least monthly now, right? Yeah. So I mean, get in touch with somebody, or come to the meeting, or you know, get your, your voice to be heard if you have something to you know good suggestion. But some of these suggestions have been kicked around before. Some of them are new. So I I think it's on the same page with where we're heading as a council. I mean, if anybody wants to make motion to. Prolong it, but I no, no. My yeah, intention no, wasn't, right, right. wasn't to prolong it. I just wanted to make sure that we have we uh, concerns yes. that address, and, and we can do that in sequentially. Though, let's, let's give tentative approval and move forward. Good. Any other council comments? Yeah, I just okay. one comment, and that is the concern. Yep. Dave is after Jody. Okay, when just let him know. Just the the comment of uh, blasting it on the digital sign. You know, we're talking about keeping it uh, for our community. We need to be careful what we put on that sign. Right. Uh, back to why I didn't want the sign. You know, why I wasn't huge in favor of digital signs. Because, you know, you put out there we're having jazz in the park on May 15th, then everyone that passes the bridge is going to come to jazz in the park on May 15th. So when they see that on the sign, just to, you know, beware. Uh, Dave? Um, based upon what I've just read about these events, uh, they, they all look like they're, they're minor events. I don't think that they're anything that would create mass chaos within the city. Uh, it looks like something that's uh, very low key and relatively quiet. Uh, so I, I don't have a problem with this. And I'll just remind everyone that when we had probably the biggest event that this city's seen in decades, which was the festival, nothing went off without a hitch. There was no disruption to any neighbors or anything here. I was at it the entire time. Um, the neighbors didn't even know it was happening, and we, it was you know modestly attended. Um, so I don't see that. Yeah, but I mean to Jody's point, yeah, if you advertise it on the sign, maybe somebody may go, hey, May fifteenth, they got jazz in the park, and they'll come out. But you know, for all we know, they could be having a you know a world-renowned jazz artist and coachman that same day. So you know, uh, we're going to be Bel Air Beach. I think it's going to be modest, and I think this will all work. So we're not going to have Woodstock outside. Um, citizens, any comments? No citizen comments. Okay, back to council. If there's any other questions or comments before we call this for a vote. Okay, so let's clarify. We're going to call it for tentative approval tonight. It'll get you to go ahead, but before you like maybe commit to you know big expenditures, please come back to us, give us an update. Okay. 
So the consideration is the approval for the Park and Recreation Board events for 2021. You have Jazz in the Park and the Family Picnic, that's May 15th, 2021, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. The Halloween Dog Costume Parade and Contest, October 30th, 2021, time to be determined. Christmas tree lighting and holiday social, that's going to be either December 4th or 6th, 2021, 5.30 p.m. And a Christmas boat parade, right now tentatively scheduled for December 18th, time to be determined. It says time, same as Indian Rocks Beach, but you're going to have to work that out depending on who else participates. Uh, a yes vote will pass this. Madam Clark. You wanted a roll call vote for this one? Let's do a roll call vote for this, because I said some people may not be with us on this. Councilmember Aki? Aye. Councilmember Beam? Aye. Councilmember Gaddis? Aye. Councilmember Shirley? Aye. Councilmember Swope? Nay. Vice Mayor Gunn? Aye. Mayor Manzo? Aye. So this passes six to one. Thank you for great suggestions here. And you're invited every month. Uh, in the past, we had monthly updates. If you, don't, you don't have to come every month, but as you're getting progress, please keep us advised. And when, you're, when you have a kind of a firm number on a budget, please come to us and give you the final approval on that. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. Item 10 is a authorization for sole source purchase of a WAY Pro, a WAY WA stop NPS valves for storm and water drainage po uh, projects. This was put on by the city manager. This is uh, to purchase check valves for $27,815. Do I have a motion? So moved. Uh, Jody Shirley and then Mark Bean. Council comments. Jody? Or do you want to go to the... Okay, Lynn? Yes, Mayor and Council, this is uh, authorization to, to purchase the WAPRO valves. This was part of our uh, stormwater bond uh, loan that we took out. It was to purchase these valves and to uh, start installation along the streets that we aren't even, that are in the future plan, uh, going down to uh, 18th Street. So this is the additional valves we need. This is the same provider we've used throughout the city. And in the package, you'll find the estimate. It was updated in January to verify the pricing and the sole source uh, letter. Uh, that they're the sole provider of that file, but we want to stay consistent about what we're putting in. So I'm requesting your approval tonight. I'm going to have a question for you. Are these valves, I know in the past you've sometimes put them in ourselves, you self installed, and other times we've had them done by outsiders when they were too big. What do you see with these valves? Are these self-installed jobs? We got a couple we'll have to have outsiders, but we're getting pretty good at it. What streets, <laughs> what streets do you have in mind for these? Uh, we will be 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th. Yeah, 18th. And let, let me just say something to the, to the citizens who might be watching or have not familiar with this. This is the company you've used in the past. They are a sole source on this thing, truly a sole source. We've used them. And most importantly, when you thought you had some issues with some of these, these companies did outstanding service, as I remember, even sending people in from overseas, I believe, to work with you to make sure these things were working right. And that's just tremendous service. So um, I don't have any problem getting behind that, but I just want people to understand the level of service they provided to the city manager. Yeah, th this this company uh, is from Switzerland, and they actually sent their engineer over here a couple times with us, and they spent several days with us. And their uh, representatives that's in the Florida area is very good. We've even had even had the president of the company here a couple times, so uh, they're behind them, and uh, we've we've had good luck. It's not going to stop all the flooding, but it, it reduces it, and. Uh, when we've had issues with them, they come out and spend time and, uh, you know, if the flap didn't shut or what have you. So, uh, they're on, right now, they're on uh, actually 1st through 8th and 12th to 13th. Yeah, they're on those. So, uh, and the 7th and 8th Street project is ongoing right now, but the valves have been put in, so that's a good thing. 
Just so everyone knows, you, you mentioned it, that these won't stop all the flooding. So, you know, if we get a flood, if we get a hurricane, I thought this, these check valves do. In fact, they actually close in that event. These are for when you get lunar flooding, when you get tidal flooding, that is, um, they call them sunny day check valves. But basically, we have a lot of that where, you know, you have a beautiful sunny day, but it's a full moon, high tide, and all of a sudden we got water in the streets. This stops that, and it's, it's done a really good job so far, and he's, and he's going through the city, street by street, to take care of this. So, so all I ask is your approval. Okay. Yeah, I, would, I would just add on top of that, too, the city manager has done some informal testing with his little science fair kit. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, pretty much disproved any concerns about yeah. salt water. Salt water, water. Yeah. It seemed to be working. Do you want to say that again? Because that was a, I mean, he, this was an important finding that he made. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't it, make sure everyone knows this. So. Yeah, it was, it was just a little test to take what's in the street and uh, do the parts per million test on it, as opposed to what's in the bay or the intercoastal. And uh, I might be off a couple numbers, but what was in the street was, uh, the number came up like 270 parts per million. And just to do another test, I went and, of our drinking water and it was like 200 parts per million so what was in the street i guess if you dumped a little iodine in it you'd have been fine so remember that in case you ever have water <laughs> in case you uh, want to save on your water <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what was in the uh salt water was 4500 and something might have been even higher than that so that was just a test to try to clarify but so they're doing the job. That's great. Council, any other comments? Citizens? Back to council? Oh, we'll do this as a consensus vote, okay? We yes. Do this? Yeah. Okay. So all in favor? Oh, well, let me read it. Okay, so this is authorization to let the city manager sole source, sole source purchase the Waypro WA stop NPS valves for stormwater drainage projects. It's purchasing check valves for twenty-seven thousand eight hundred fifteen dollars, pursuant to what's in our uh, binder packages that we received. A yes vote will give him that authorization. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Passes seven to zero. Aye. There's the last two votes. That was, that was, those were the uh, those were the Wisconsin votes. You counted. <laughs> 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 the mountain folks. <laughs> okay, so it still passes seven to zero. Thank you, uh, city manager. Okay, um, we move on to item 11, any unfinished business. Lynn, did you, you were going to update us. We're kind of doing a combined, we don't have a separate work session this month because we had a real long one last month, but city manager is going to update us. Do you want to update us here or during your portion? I'll just do it during my You got it. Any other unfinished business? Nope. I have a oh. question, I guess. Okay. Is, is this unfinished business, the marina? Why is this I'm going to bring something. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it is, and he's doing it under this. <laughs> okay. Um, city attorney? No, sir. Okay, Lynn, you've dodged it long enough. It's all yours. There you go. Unfinished well, business in your rates. Just, just first, first uh, blush on the marina rates. Um, we, we, we sent out a letter to the marina uh, slipper renters and told them as an example of uh, what their new fee was going to be April 1st. And we've had a little bit of pushback because of how they're classified. And the pushback has come from uh, property owners, but they don't live here. They have, as an example, the, there's one person on here that has, uh, owns two pieces of property here, and, but they have boats in the marina. And if you look at, at the cost of as an example, uh, we'll just use Miss Zimmerman. Uh, her rate is going up to 170, up 171 dollars from the previous uh, 239 dollars with tax. So we just wanted to show you the impact, uh, and we've heard from several of the what I what are called the non-resident property owners, and their comment basically is. I'm a taxpayer, why am I paying a premium when I'm a taxpayer? So I'm just passing that on to the council uh, as an information and to get any feedback that you want me to pass on to them. Because what the resolution says, it says full-time residents, and uh, 
their position is their property owners. Well, Ms. Zimmer, in the Zimmer case, for instance, I was going to ask, why does she have two slips? I, I don't, I don't know why we should allow anyone to have two slips. I think that that, I mean, so if she forfeit, forfeits one of her slips, then she's making out ahead. Actually, she won't pay nearly as much as she would if she had two. I mean, just to start with, but you know, I still stand that our prices are fair, resident, non-resident. I do not, I mean, there are other slips available. They can go to other marinas. I, I mean, I hate to be difficult about it, but I just don't think that we're asking too much for the slip rentals. If she lived on the water and chose to keep her dock, you know, there's, I mean, I don't know the, I don't know the answer, but I'm just saying that she doesn't live in the city. She owns two properties. I have a, I'm just struggling with this one. And she just did for instance, you know? Well, the question was that, hey, I own property here. And that's what the question has come from other people. So Kyle's taken a couple, well, several phone calls from, of course, the people that say, hey, I own property here. I pay taxes. I'm not getting any benefit. That's the question. So I just want you to be aware that. How many of those do we have? Well, if you look on the list where it says NRPO, that's a non-resident property number. So there's one, two, there's, I think it's seven out of the 19 slips. How many of those are rentals? What do you mean rentals? Where they're renting, where they're, they're making profit on the property. I couldn't tell you that, that, you know, I, I can't, I don't have that, you know, I'd have to go back to the rental registration. A condo, I'm guessing, a house, well, I know Mr. Casper is a, is a rental property. That I know on 9th Street. Condo, you know, Dave, I couldn't tell you specifically, but I just want to make the council aware. Yeah, are these income producing properties? In other words, they're, they're residents that they're, they're property that they own. Are they income producing properties or are they second homes? That would be kind of important to know. Well, I, I would venture to say, this is just my opinion. They're, I know Mr. Casper's is a rental. The others are condos and I know Mr. Carmichael doesn't rent his, his is his second home, but he's stuck in England right now. So he goes back and forth, but he's not a, what I call a, he doesn't have a, I guess a Florida driver's license. He probably has a name. I have a comment. So basically the way that, that I see this is that the marina benefits the residents of Bel Air Beach. If you don't hold a driver's license and live here the majority of the time, you are technically not a resident of Bel Air Beach. You may, you may bring luggage here and stay for a month or two and then you leave your boat year round. I don't see how that benefits the full-time residents of Bel Air Beach. And I think first and foremost, residents should always take the front seat on that marina. All I'm asking for is just to, I'm not asking for anything. I'm just trying to give you some feedback from what we've got, what Kyle's got, because Kyle has taken over the responsibility for the marina. Do we have a waiting list for people who want to rent? Yes. Yeah. And, and we're going to redo the policy to kind of clarify that a little better because it's, it's been a while. It's just like the rental rates. It was 2007 is the last time they were raised. Well, my thought is to me, it seems like they had a really good deal, really cheap deal. And now that it's comparable, it's still a good deal. They're unhappy with that. And so I guess we could say, well, I mean, this is how it is. If you don't like it, there's other places you can go knowing that we have other people that would jump on the opportunity to rent. 
So I think we're in a good position that we're not trying to make them happy because we need them because we don't have anybody else that wants it and it would be lost income. We have a waiting list, so I don't think we need to be pushovers. I think we need to stick to our guns and say this is how it is. No, I'm, uh, all I'm doing is giving you a heads up. That's, okay. that's all um, this is. I, I think the comments that have been, I, I just have to, I'm not going to add a lot to it that hasn't been said. I think Joey's comment, uh, Robin's comment, and Dave Gass's comments, that's what we were talking about as we were going through this. And I, I agree with everybody, what everybody said. That, that was our thinking. As far as I'm concerned, I would vote for no changes on this thing. I hear them. I'm also with Jody. Two boat slips? I mean, we only have 18 slips, and somebody's got two of them? I mean that you know we got a waiting list of what 30 people, 40 people, and somebody has two. That's that's pretty good. Um, you know they actually have two boats of their own. I, I don't know. Um, maybe some. Yeah, they do. Filipino. Okay, that's great. I mean, but that's very very fortunate in a nice marina like ours. So um, I, I you know I think the market will dictate what's the best value, and I think Bella Beach Marina is a good value right now. So. Okay. So, so no, let's see if anybody else has comments. I, I mean, think we open up to the Yes, a question for a city manager. Uh, Lynn, you may have said this, and I might have just missed it, but how many people are actually on the waiting list, do you know, as residents? Uh, I don't have that with me right now, but I can send that out so the council knows that. I'll send it out in the morning. It's not a problem. Okay. And my only other comment is actually to our city attorney. Does he foresee any issues uh, between us defining what a resident is and a property owner? I mean... Everybody does pay taxes, so I'm just curious if there's any going to be any problem with that aspect. Well, my response to that would be when you pass a resolution, you you made a deter or a decision that it was going to be residents. So that that was the legal standard you set. That is different than property owner. If you ever want to change it, the legal standards you certainly have the ability to do that. You just simply have to um, do a changes to the ordinance and that would um, allow you to, to change the legal standards. So um, I, I would mirror what has been said the last few minutes. You should enforce the standards that you put in place and the, it, it would appear to me the distinctions that are being made are to the, the typical distinctions that are be, being made when somebody is trying to find a way to pay less somehow. Any other council comments? I yeah. have the information on the wait list, by the way. Go ahead, Dave. All right, I am, uh, I'm showing this was, uh, if this is the most recent update, we've got a total of 80, around 80 people that are on the wait list. I would say more than half, uh, probably about two thirds are non-residents. Um, we've got around 20 that are property owners and two that are residents that are currently on the list. Yeah, and just, just so the council knows, we, we send out uh, something to those, the wait list every year, and Kyle has done that already. I, I don't know that it's compiled totally up to date yet, but because people will put their name on it, and then, as Patty knows, because she used to run it, the people will put their name on it, and then they, if, if you don't contact them, to say, hey, it's a new year, are you still interested? They'll leave their name on them for whatever. So we try to do that, make that distinction every year. So I think we're fine with it. I just wanted to make sure that the council was aware that we had a little pushback from a few people and I didn't want you, uh, how do I say it, uh, sideswiped and somebody show up here and say something to you and you didn't know about it. So we're good with that. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is part of the... Lynn, can you speak into that mic? I don't yeah, know the next thing I want to talk about is, is uh, the speed limit request. I spoke to the county, uh, spoke to Tom Morshburn. Uh, he said they'd probably have to do a speed study. Uh, 
both cities would have to agree uh, and they would look at the FDOT speed zoning handbook to, to look at that and uh, I did request uh, an additional flashing light for around 7th Street uh, the one here at the causeway is is uh, in the plan already for coming across the bridge uh, so and one other thing we'll have some uh, data monthly data from the one that's going north uh, he told me that as they pull down the monthly data he'll send me that report so we can kind of update and see where that's at so those are the steps uh, i've asked him about doing the speed study and i did ask the sheriff but i haven't got the report back i want i wanted to find out if there were any crashes related to speed on causeway or causeway or gulf over the last, I asked him for 24 months, so they're going to give me that report also. So I'll bring that back to the consulate in, in the future. But that's where we're at right now with the speed. Uh, then on that sign, you might want to consider, since you're going to be placing that for people going north, to place it before the crosswalk, not afterwards. We want them to slow down before they hit the crosswalk. On yeah, we're, we're, we're talking we about between, between six. seven and eight. No, I'm saying between... Sixth, and be, before you get to sixth, because oh, you're, you're wanting it to go this way. You're not going to be on Bel Air Shore side, right? You can't put it there. Yes, we can. Oh, you can. Oh. It right away. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I got the impression from all the discussion at the work session that the speed was more going that direction as opposed to coming this direction. It, is that it's where the motorcycle races seem to go? Yeah, <laughs> that way. Yeah. Okay. So. So that's what I what I asked, but see that would be in the the, the right of way, so that's okay. county right of way. Okay. So that that has no real issue there. So, and uh, as I said, they will give us some data from that. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing we talked about was Zoom meeting. Uh, you're getting a little taste of it tonight, uh, but uh, myself and Kyle and. The vice mayor accompanied us over to Bel Air, and uh, JP was uh, the city manager. Uh, very insightful, took us, spent it was probably an hour uh, with us, gave us some information, things that we could buy that, to create that Zoom meeting once we all go to iPads and everything, uh, and to eliminate that feedback issue. Uh, he gave uh, told us about a box that you buy for 150 bucks. So we, we got that, we're gonna do some testing and we'll keep you up to date where we're at as we move along. So uh, one thing he did mention, they have what I call a bar mic. It's about, it's like a sound bar on the TV uh, and they were scattered along their dais and uh, it was kind of interesting because he didn't have them all up there when I was there, but I could walk to, like, we'll say where Robin's at, and the mic might have been where Jody's sitting, and you could pick up my voice. And uh, so I thought that was interesting. And, and those are things that we probably need to upgrade the system, and that'll help us with what I do, what everybody does with the microphone. So uh, that's, we'll, we'll do the additional testing We've asked for some pricing on the mics and we'll get some more information back to you. So that's an update on that. Well, the last thing we talked about majorly at the work session was the impact fee. Uh, the impact fee for Pinellas County for, it's called the multimodal uh, impact fee. It was changed uh, probably a year and a half ago used to be that uh, anybody that built a, a new house, if there was a house on the lot, they got 100% credit. Well, that's changed uh, since sometime in late 19. Um, so what would happen is the, the base fee for Ellis County is $2,066, and that's for a house that's 2,500 square feet. If they had a, a house on it today, uh, and they tore it down, and the house was between 1,500 and 2,400 square feet, they'd get $1,600, $1,679 credit towards that fee. And if it was 
below fifteen hundred, they'd get thirteen hundred and fifty-six dollars credit against that impact fee. Previously, it didn't matter what size the house was. If if it was a thousand square foot house and you put a twenty-five hundred square foot house, the impact there was no impact fee. Uh, so. And how that works is it's it's a county-wide fee. It's charged based on the county's uh, section 150. Uh, <clears throat> so now what will happen with us? And I even went back and looked to see if the city ever collected any impact fees. The last impact fee that was collected was 2008. Uh, but I know in the Few years I've been here, most of the most of the new homes have been a teardown home. Now, recently we've got houses that uh, are vacant lots, so to get their CO, they'll be paying an impact fee to us for multimodal. Uh, we get 50 percent of the 2,066 dollars. Uh, 50 percent goes to Pinellas County. We also get four percent of their 50 percent. For an administrative fee, so that's another 40, 50 bucks. So we'll end up getting a little over a thousand dollars, maybe 1,100 out of each new home. And if it's a home that was torn down, uh, we'll have one as an example that's on 12th Street uh, in the very new future uh, that was a tear down last year. So they'll get some credit based on the size of the house. And to verify that, we'll use the property appraiser's estimate of the square footage of the house. Now, right now, there are several houses being built on brand new lots that didn't have a house on them, or they haven't for a very long time. So we'll have to, if, if somebody wants a credit, they're gonna have to prove to us that there was a house on there. So those will collect the full fee. So. I hope that's your answer to the transportation impact fee, but it was a county-wide fee. As far as sewer and water, those are collected by uh, Pinellas County, and uh, we don't have a park impact fee, uh, and that's pretty much the major ones. And I'm going to ask Jody, any other major ones other than in a development? Um, I, there's a couple of things we, that I see where we're missing the boat, and that is we're not we're not doing like an environmental in, uh, permit or a, a, no NSP sort of inspection or management from our team. So I think that that would be somewhere where we're going out before they tear down the house, before they start construction, make sure silk fence is in place, make sure that we're not having any runoff into the street, and. There should be a fee for that. We need to, you know, oversee these projects and make sure that we're keeping them clean. The the one project we talked about last last month, I noticed there's no silt fence along the roadways. There is dirt in the gutter. That dirt goes into our sewer system, so we've got issues there that it's just not being maintained to standards, you know, construction standards. The other thing is, um, I just got a development order from City of Largo for two units. There's a park fee on there. I mean, I would I'll be happy oh. to share it with you. No, no, I know a lot of there's some that. There's some opportunities that when we're looking at our comprehensive plan, we need to consider them, and I think that, that we're missing the boat on um, controlling development a little bit more. Well, there are there are park, park fees in many cities. Um, you know, I guess this city had never even entertained it, as an example. But... Uh, there is a fee for their, uh, they pay a fee to us for the demolition, it's, it's a $40 fee, uh, and that's for the NPDES requirement and the silt fence. We go out and do an inspection, we tell them to fix it. If we have to go again and tell them to fix it, then there's a $100 fee that we charge them. But we don't require silt fence around new projects. That's what. That's no, what no, but it's required around new projects. Well, it's not up there. Well, Kyle, I know, goes out weekly. And, There's and never I'm, been silt fence be on that. Uh, those two <laughs> houses, they have one has chain link fence around it, the other one has nothing, and they're, the, the road is covered in dirt and has been every time I've gone by there. So. 
Well, that, that the recently, the, yeah, the recently the county dug up the uh, sewer line tap, and uh, I know they're going to go across the street, which. Mayor, I'm telling you ahead of time, you may hear. Yeah, I heard about it. You told me about this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know the situation. So, uh, you know, we, we'll you know, get a stronger enforcement on the silk fence. So I guess the question is, how do we, how do we develop some procedures for this? Because I, I think that we don't have good procedures, and I'm not sure that, you know, if it's the uh, comprehensive plan where we address this, and we really sit down and put together a task force to look at it and say, is there an opportunity for us to clean up our development order or how we issue permits? How do we go about doing that? Well, the comp plan will, we can discuss that more, I'm sure, with the impact fees. Uh, and that will be starting here shortly because I've, I've uh, got the agreement and got it taken care of with the county. We've, we have an interlocal agreement with Forward and Pinellas to do that type of work for us. And uh, Linda Fisher is going to be the person that's going to take care of that. So she'll be starting shortly, uh, actually probably sometime later this month in February. So can I get involved in that or is that yeah. something that just happens and we find out about it at a council meeting? Or no, no, no. The, 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 that stuff will be done and then it goes, the planning board reviews it. So, I mean, you're welcome to be involved. It has a... Yeah, I'd like to talk to her if I could. Okay, okay. that's not a problem. Okay. So, I mean, I, I mean, going to the silk fence issue, I don't know how this one slipped through. I know when I built my house, the uh, city was intimately involved, and if it actually my neighbor knocked it down by accident, they were building their pool in the back, and somebody gave us a call and like get that thing back up. So, I mean, we were always pretty vigilant on that, and I can say it from personal experience. So, we, we should stay vigilant through our code and you know through our city uh, inspections. Well, they, there are requirements. We, we, you know, the public works group is supposed to do a, an inspection on all the silt vents routinely. And I understand what you're saying about 15th Street. Uh, the county, most of that mud that's in the street is because the county dug up the, the road there. Or not the road, they dug up the curb and all that stuff along there. Uh, when they do that, do they come? I noticed they patched on hibiscus. I asked about why they had it opened up. They replaced a manhole and they patched where they worked, but they did a whole lot of other damage. The street is just a mess now. And what's the plan for that? Who Who's responsible for that? Well, if they, they did something they did, then we can go back to the county and they'll fix it. Uh, I know we had that issue on the curb by the mayor's house. So we'll just go back to the county and talk to them. There, the, I will tell you this, the, like the one on Hibiscus, the, the, the county is, in that area, is not good about telling you unless you go ask them. They don't notify anybody uh, because it's their sewer system and they figure, well, I'm digging it up or the contractor did it, as the, as the case was on 7th Street. Uh, so, you know, I talked to those guys last week and said, hey, you know, when you start digging up stuff here, you need to tell us because residents call us and, you know, we're saying, well, what happened here? And, you know, so it's more like we have to go ask them. They don't come and tell us. And to that note, I mean, you know, some of the work that they've done locally by me, you know, if they're going to turn off the water, I know it's not a precise thing, but if they could let you know so you can blast it out to everyone, at least on a either a quick email or at least on the website, you know, you're in the middle one day. I mean, we're in the middle of taking a shower and they cut the stuff off, and it's like, yeah, this is great. You know, I mean, I'm all for progress, but they know that that stuff is coming. It wasn't an emergency. You know, so, right, right. Do we have an agreement with it? Pinellas County for, I mean, clearly we have some sort of easement agreement or something that allows them to have their utility on our property, and maybe this is a question for Fred, but can we review those agreements, Fred? And, and There's not really a, an agreement. Uh, I mean, the city sold the sewer it. system. They own it. They own it, but so it runs through the city's property, so they must have an easement with the city of some sort. Well, if they get in, if if they have a uh, 
in some cases they'll come and get a right of way permit or something like that. But you know, if, if it's damage that is an emergency to fix, they go fix it. I don't think on hibiscus it was because clearly they moved in a bunch of equipment and had it staged for a day or two before they opened the road up. So there, there must have been a, something to do with the manhole. It was a problem. That's what I was told. It was a problem, with, and they had to change a valve out. That's what I was told. So I don't know, Fred. I, I know there's no agreement. We have an annual gen, general permit agreement with the county. Uh, but that's a question I can ask. I, I don't, you know, I know we did sell the sewer system to the county, and they provide our water service. Glenn, you had a question? I was just going to say that's all fair and well. I mean, I understand that when you have an emergency or some sort of exigent circumstance, they need to come out here and cut off the water or something. But for normal operating, recurring maintenance stuff, I mean. You, you brought up that concern. Did they acknowledge it, or I mean, it seems to me that it's well, who you're concern. dealing with in the street is is not who we really need to deal with. Well, no, I, I understand that. So, what support do you need from the council? Do we need to write a strong letter to the county or something? No, I'll, I'll talk to uh, I'm blanking it, Frank, in his name, Joe Graham. I'll, I'll talk to him and see what he tells me. And I'll, I'll bring you any information he gives me. Okay, because I, I, I consider that a professional courtesy. I don't expect to, for people to just show up on your doorstep and cut off the water or turn off the traffic lights or something. Well, I, I think in the, the, if a, in some cases, if they turned the water off, it, it, it could have been the contractor needed, like on 7th Street, uh, the contractor needed to do something because there was an offset, I'm guessing. But uh, uh, in some cases, as I said, they, the, the county's not real good at sharing a lot of information as far as that. Well, and I, I think maybe they're just not getting the feedback. People just kind of accept it. And it's just, they're oh, doing it again. Oh, I've talked to them about, you know, it's kind of like the 7th Street uh, lift station. You know, uh, <laughs> I've been around. <laughs> I've been around with them, and they they're doing this and they're doing that. And uh, uh, but I will say, in some cases they work with you. In other cases, it's it's just a thing that they don't tell you what they're really doing. I mean, to Glenn's point, though, you know, I, I know I, I met Joe Graham when when we did the uh, one of the tours, and I mean, if we need to do a letter from council, you know, or a resolution or something that you have. A little bit more teeth, you know, with, with that. I mean, let them know that we are concerned. I mean, it may not seem like anything. Like Glenn said they show up at your doorstep. You know what, Glenn? They don't even give you that courtesy. They, you just see a guy out there with a with a. We know what the, the wrench, what a tool looks like now. It looks like a big T. But you see that guy on the corner. It's like, uh oh, <laughs> you know, you better get moving because he's uh, he's gonna cut your water. They don't tell you how long, and you know, everybody's standing out in the street going, "How long is this gonna be?" And it's like no one knows, you know. So. They could do a little bit better in that regard. I mean, you know, it, it, even if they tell you the day before, like we're going to be cutting your water tomorrow, you get up early, do whatever you got to do, and, you know, be ready for them. So, okay, I've got a list of things. So go ahead, keep going. I mean, this is, you know what? I mean, just so everyone knows, we're not having a work session, so this is kind of like a work session here with this part of the thing. That's what we had planned on before I had spoke with Lynn. So that's why the question and answer, Mark. Yeah, getting back to construction. Just recently, we had a pool built on Louisa. Well, they drove over the curb with a cement truck and parked it between the two homes. Now they drove over some water lines, cable lines, with a cement truck. I don't know if we have a rule with the county when their permit is issued to keep the cement trucks on the street and use a pumper to pump the concrete. The, well, same, the same thing goes with tearing down a the house. There's damage that could be done with the curbs. We don't go out and inspect before the house is tore down, so there could be damage with a bulldozer going over those curbs. Well, we, we are starting to take pictures of those curbs when a house is de demolished. And uh, uh, so we're, we're trying to get a little more forceful with the uh, contractors. And, it, I, I think it'll work to, to our advantage in the long term. And I, I don't know, 
you know, a property owner that allows them to back their cement truck up, I mean, you, you're, you're, you're kind of limited on what you can control. I mean, uh, I don't know where that happened. Was that that house on the corner? Dr. Ward's that Dr. Ward. Yeah, okay. Because they tore out, they tore out everything for that side because they're building a new swimming pool in the back. Marv, I will tell you, having done many a cement job when I was younger, um, there, it's impossible to get the cement truck driver to come off the paved surface. So whoever did that, that's definitely not up to their normal protocol because they're so worried that they're going to sink into the into the ground. So that's, a lot of, that is a rare one. <laughs> they're in the undergrounding and they drove right, right over the wires and the feeds and all the boxes were around. That's too late once they're parked. Absolutely. And then the, any other questions on that subject? And the last subject, just to let I you know. I just want to, on the utilities, I, I had asked Fred, is there, do you have any experience oh. dealing with that? And is that something that, you know, that where you might write a letter or draft a letter or, you know, how do we get communication with Pinellas County and our utility companies to provide a courtesy call to the city if they're going to be moving in and ripping a road apart. I mean, they literally close roads and don't tell anyone. Lynn had no idea the road was closed. Um, I've not read the contract when, they, when it was sold, which must have been a number of years ago, so it'd be, to give you a good answer, it'd be helpful to know what's in it. Um, the, I think the real solution for the short term is what Lynn said he would do already, which is to reach out to them and make them aware that the council is, um, you know, unsettled about some of the ways that they're doing business and notify, give, give them a, a informal notice of it. And if, you know, quite frankly, he doesn't get a very good reaction to that, then I think the thing to do is for him to tell the council and, and for y'all to direct something that's more, um, you know, memorialized that, that better states the position. I, I, what I would hope is another government entity would uh, be responsive to the, the concerns that Lynn explained to them and would, you know, that in itself would solve the problem, although that isn't the way it always works. Thanks. Yeah, the the uh, the other thing I'm working on is uh, I know you've seen some of these half telephone poles next to a tall telephone pole or utility pole. Uh, I'm working on getting some of those dead wires off uh, by uh, I guess uh, pushing the issue with with as an example. There's a lot of, of uh, wires in the city that are not active. And the, unfortunately, these vendors like Spectrum or Frontier is the biggest abuser of that. They don't want to come out and move their utilities to the next pole that's brand new. Uh, so I've, I've been working on that and uh, made some phone calls and made some contacts. And at least I'm getting a little, little, little bit forward movement from Frontier, because uh, they're the, the ones that put the Verizon lines. Well, they're they're the Verizon was the predecessor for those of you that may or may not have lived here when they did that. I don't know, probably ten years ago, maybe when they put the fiber in. Uh, they left a lot of overhead stuff, uh, and I will tell you that. Uh, the last line on the undergrounding project is due to come down next week. Uh, and the undergrounding project at Bellevue Estates Island will be complete. Uh, so this is a good thing. <laughs> Took us a while, but uh, it'll be complete. So, uh, And then the final thing is the electronic cameras. We got two bids for that. Uh, it came in at, uh, the low bid was $14,203, and the next higher bid was $17,866, and I'll put that on for approval in uh, the March meeting. 
is the bid that just came in. And if everything goes right, we'll have the signed bid also on March. Uh, it's due the 16th. And if you don't have any other questions, that's all I got. And then I just have a piece of information for you. I'm going to go over some of the stuff that happened at the Big C meeting, but they may have even reached out to you already. But um, a couple of the mayors started discussing the pooling of heavy-duty equipment. Um, example, Indian Shores, I think, just bought a bucket loader, and they said, you know, there's no reason why other cities up and down the coast can't share in other utilities. I mean, we all don't need to buy a bucket loader, but like they said, we all hang up Christmas decorations, and maybe that can be coordinated. So it was something that came up. We didn't get really in-depth on it, but it sounds like a very smart idea. Um, and I don't know if the city managers will start speaking with each other, or maybe they've already reached out, but that idea is out there, and you might be hearing about it in the future. Yeah, the county is, uh, is, is put an agreement together. Uh, I don't know if that's what they're talking about, uh, and if we want to participate in it, it's like loaning equipment. Un unfortunately for us, we'd be the borrower. It's, we don't really have anything to loan uh, unless you need a pickup truck. <laughs> oh yeah, or the gator. Uh, but if if we can be part of it, of course, you know I'll bring something to the to the console because that's a benefit. I, I mean, uh, to us. I mean, I'm not sure how it would work. They, we didn't get into the detail, and you know, I mean, obviously they don't. I'm sure they don't want to be a rental agency, but. You know, if you're going to go out and, like, you did tree trimming, I think, the other year, you have to rent the thing. So Right now. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, they have it parked probably in their backyard. Nobody's using it. So, you know, if we could help out another town and not wind up having to go to war over it, I mean, it, it would be great, you know. So, something to think about. I know we don't really probably have much to offer. I think we just have an extra, like I said, an extra pickup truck. So, right. Which I could have used last weekend, but you weren't around. So, just kidding. I don't want anybody to say that. All right. Anything else, Lynn? Anybody have any no. questions for Lynn? Okay. Um, City Clerk. Did you have anything? No, I did. Thank you. Okay. City Clerk. This is just the first numbers on the community survey, um, just to give you an idea of, of how it's going. Like Lynn said, we have approximately 219 and of those and I'm going to break it down the email they're asking 205 want the email 100 want the mobile text 24 want the automated voice system 49 want the website 13 want Facebook 48 newsletter and 13 message board how long is that open till that, uh, that response period I don't think we put a close date, did we? No, we, we didn't put yeah. a close date. We didn't put a close date on it. Uh, I expect another week to ten days. We, th this was the first week since the mailing that, that we got back last week. Uh, and uh, prior to that, uh, we got some in mail, some went online and did it. Uh, but you know, I'm expecting right now we've got 17% of the population, or 17% of the addresses based on the number of homes and condos in Bower Beach. Uh, if it gets to 25%, we'll probably be fortunate. I don't think it'll get much higher than that. I mean, and that'll give us a list of about 300 people, 300 residents. Uh, and, uh, and uh, our previous uh, constant contact list was 469, so that kind of gives you an idea that, hey, maybe we've, out of that list, we'll, and we're going to cross-check them, because we want to see if we gained anything from the previous list. And uh, so we'll quit using that old list, and we're going to start using this new list. Uh, as we build it, and we'll just keep adding to it. And we'll keep the survey on the website. If somebody fills it out and sends it in, hey, that's great. But, uh, you know, I'm anticipating probably we get another 100, because usually the, the influx is immediate. Uh, when we sent out the blast, I think we got like 100. 
115 with that email blast from the constant contact list. And we picked up maybe another 100 from this. Anything else? No. I have a comment for you. Um, it's a good one. Um, <laughs> we've been like uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears with the uh, with the minutes. You know, sometimes they're too long, sometimes they're too short. I read through the ones we had, and this is just me speaking. They were just right this time. I mean, they were perfect. They were to the point. They had all the key points. I don't think there was one word in there that didn't really wasn't necessary. As far as I'm concerned, this was the, the minutes for the last two events were outstanding. As far as I, you know, I had no comments whatsoever on them, other than they were excellent. So great job on them. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? We go to the city council then. Robin Aki for first. No comment. Mark Beam. Well, the only thing I have uh, for you is uh, we have a tree on 22nd and Louisa. It's on the north side. Second house between the first and second house. That tree is in the right away. It's in the right away, right at the curb. So if a truck goes by or an SUV goes by, the branches of that palm. And that's something we've talked about for all the uh, trees and bushes next to the roadway that block the site, the line of sight. But that one's the only one that sticks out. Uh, Danny, look at that. Thank you. Over the wall. Anything else, Mark? No, thanks, sir. Dave Gaddis, I don't know if you can hear me, but Dave Gaddis. Dave? Yes. Do you have anything? Cost comments? I, I, I could barely. I know. I, I couldn't hear Marv. I, I was trying to understand what he was saying, but I, I don't. I don't have anything to add at this time. Jody Shirley. No comments. Rita Slow. Rita. No comment. Glenn Gunn. No comment. <laughs> Glenn Gunn. A few thoughts. Um, along with the, uh, the Zoom meeting. Uh, what I took away from Bel Air was it's doable and it's affordable. And in my brief uh, networking, trying to get some interest in the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee, this uh, idea of remote attendance is, is very big. People are very interested in this. Hey, you know, man, I want to be down there mixing it up in public and or I'm a busy person and I can't schedule it into my day to be there personally but this remote tennis stuff is, is good stuff so I know uh, Kyle's involved in this and the city mayor is working hard to make this uh, thing a timely uh, event for us. Professional courtesies you know I've got to think that the county is scheduling their preventative maintenance and recurring maintenance weeks, months, quarterly ahead. And the idea of just giving our city managers a, a week's notice heads up, hey, we're going to have bucket trucks and earth movers and back end loaders in your neighborhood, you know, two weeks from now. I don't consider that to be an impossibility. And I think we just need to give them some very strong feedback that, hey, you know, that's, that's just how we do business and that's a professional courtesy. Along the lines of impact fees, I think uh, Joey's spot on on some of this stuff. And, and it boils down to truly understanding what the cost of doing business is. I mean, nothing is too little that we, we, we need to understand what the cost of it is. Maybe it's just our person jumping in the car and spending a half hour to drive around and check sediment uh, fences, but that's a cost to the city and we can't just chalk it off to, well, it takes 30 minutes to do that, and everything. It all started when we did our inventory of the city. You know, what do we own? What's it cost to maintain it? What's it cost to use it? Stuff like that. It's just trying to get an accountant's idea of what's the cost of doing business around here, and factor that into our budgets and all of our strategic planning. Lastly, the cable companies, and this all came to light as we're trying to finish up the underground project there, and you wander around and you see all these coils and pigtails of unused cable and stuff just diked off and hanging from telephone poles, and it, it's putting something on my radar scope, and that is 
we need to tighten up our contracting, our franchising. There, there are standards of workmanship and acceptable standards of, that, of quality workmanship. And I don't expect anybody to walk on anybody's property, just dike a wire and leave it hanging there. I think we need to look at our contracts. I think we need to look at our permits and say, hey, this is a standard of workmanship that we expect. We need to look at our contract and build in penalties. Hey, if you don't meet a deadline, if you don't meet the quality, if you have to redo something, this is the cost of, of that kind of stuff. And I think for too long we just kind of had the old contracts and it was just plug and chug, boilerplate, and or that's how business is done. But I think it's really time to put our foot down and hey, if we want to be a premier community, then this is what we expect uh, of, of workmanship in our, our community. And I'll be kind of keeping that in the forefront, I guess. Thank you. And Glenn, I just want to jump on that. I mean, I brought it up, and I think Joe's brought it up. You know, some companies do that. Um, I know when a uh, power company was behind our house was trimming out the uh, trees that were touching the wires, they gave us like a week or so advance notice saying there's going to be crew out here doing it. But, you know, to the point, I mean, it, it wasn't funny that day. I think we had a council meeting that day, and, you know, I'm sitting around unshaven, I haven't showered, and these guys are cutting the water, and it's like, you don't know if it's coming on or not. The other week I was asking you, is it okay to pull up the flags in my front yard? And, you know, I mean, you don't want to pull it up if it's not necessary. Nobody wants to hurt somebody or do any, you know, unnecessary work. But, you know, one of my neighbors had, and I'm like, no, you can take them out now. You know, but they don't, nobody knows. I mean, they'll leave them in there forever. So, uh, to Glenn's point, I mean, it's supposed to be a nice community. You wouldn't tolerate it if any other contractors did. So, you know, these guys are just a little extra. Just tell us what to do. And, hey, you could give a quick notice. You know, code could run up and down and hit every door on 7th Street or 10th Street or whatever. And there's no 10th Street, 9th Street. And, you know, and say, um, hey, what happened to 10th Street? Um, so, you know, just let them know that the construction is over. You can remove the flags. Nobody minds taking it out. But, you know, to Glenn's point, they leave a half a telephone pole in your backyard. What gives? I mean, if we did that on a construction job, you know, county or the city would be all over us. So I, I think we have to ask the same of them. Well, I will tell you this. I, I called the PSC because I, I, and, and uh, what I got told by them was, well, we don't control the cable and internet companies anymore. Okay. So who controls them? The That's <laughs> what I was told. The Department of Agriculture. So I called the Department of Agriculture. Oh, we don't control them. We just take complaints. <laughs> this is what it was and, and the okay, lady, make a I mean, the lady was very nice. And she says, well, I don't know where you go. So uh, now I've got to call into the FCC. Because somebody, there's got to be some control of them somewhere. Uh, but I know that they did away with that, uh, the, the PSC issue, but I thought they still had some, some kind of control on them, but they, they told me no, they did away with that in 2011. And it's just like the, the little telephone poles with the big boot on the top of them. You know, other than get a right-of-way permit, we have no control over those. They can put them wherever they want. But that's because the state changed the law. So uh, we'll keep digging at it. Yeah, Glenn. You know, something along those similar lines is 5G. And we had this discussion before. We have no say in when they come in and say, hey, we're going to put it in a 5G tower right here. We have no say in that. And, uh, some of the cities are getting smart about this and creating ordinances and standards for at least, hey, it has to blend with the aesthetics of the city. So while you may not have any say in where it goes, you have some say in what it's going to look like. And all of a sudden, 5G companies have to work with the cities on their permitting process and uh, acknowledging, hey, there are some standards we need to uh, comply with. So. That may be something our ordinance uh, or our uh, code review people want to take a look at. Okay. Mayor, can I ask yes, one sure. question? Yeah, it's like a work session. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just, I, it just came to me. And um, the beach walkovers. What is the completion schedule of those? Because they are taking a long time, and they've well, got the sidewalks closed. Well, they had a 90-day schedule that ends uh, 
March 1st. It looks like they'll be done in the next couple of weeks. But it was much more uh, cost effective to do them all at once as opposed to do one and then move to another one. So, I mean, uh, they're this close to finishing, yeah, yeah. and they just aren't wrapping up. And I go, they just have it looks like the sidewalk's closed forever, they're not coming back. You know, all they need is no, a they're, rail. They're, actually, I, I know they were there today, they're, they're finishing up. Uh, the, the railings, and uh, once they're done, we'll we'll do a walkthrough and make sure that they did everything within the contract, and then we'll close the contract and open the the things. But the reason we did it all at once because it was more cost effective. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Vice Mayor. Your point. I, I, I was going to go to my stuff, but I think the 5G has merit to it. I know there was preemption out of Tallahassee on some of it. I did not bother to read the big long thing, but I know there's certain preemption, but if this is something that we as a council want to, because I'm going to give you a couple things to think about for maybe the next work session. So I don't know if it's something we want to maybe get a preliminary from legal, but what is our right? I know there's certain preemption, but what can we make? Can we you know, govern aesthetics? Because I get the feeling that, to your point, one day we're going to wake up and somebody's going to be shoving one of these you know, in our backyard, and we may not like it. So the time to act is now when no one is doing anything. So if we want to do it, if we get Mr. Riley to, you know, to do the, just to see what the preemption is, and then we can kind of take it from there. Can we, you know, can we govern aesthetics? Because I thought Tallahassee put a pretty darn tough preemption on it, but that's about what I know on it. I think it was a League of Cities clip that I read on it once. So are you okay on that? Okay, limited, Fred. I mean, just see what we have, okay? Yes, sir. A couple other things I'm going to bring to your attention. Um, we talked about this one a while, the park boats. I'm not a boater, okay, so I have no dog in this fight, but it seems like every time I go over the bridge, these things are like mushrooms and there's more of them sprouting up. We're, we talk, I talked about in uh, Madeira Beach had a, uh, I believe, an excellent um, ordinance that they passed, which actually sent them all up here. Um, we may want to get that one and act on it, because uh, to me, and, and Jody, I know you have a boat, and some of their own people have them, uh, to me, that channel is starting to get pretty crowded, or, or the area surrounding the channel. So, I see what everybody thinks about it, but maybe again, something that we put for the March work session if we all have interest. I see a nodding of heads here, so that's something we want Fred maybe to take a quick look at and see what Madeira Beach has. And... Good? Yeah? Okay. Just limited, Fred. I mean, it, it, it seemed to work there, it drove them out. I, I didn't know you could control the maritime waters as a city, but if we can, um, let them go to the next town up because it's it's starting to become a lot. But one day we went over and there was one aground next to the condo in Bel Air Bluffs. It's it, not looking so good, you know? Um, another thing that we should start thinking about, because it was a topic at the Big C, and uh, a couple of the cities are actually drafting legislation toward it, is these electric bicycles and elect uh, electric scooters on the beach. Now, I've not personally witnessed it, but when I go to the beach, it's usually in Bellar Shore, and Bellar Shore has had just an overall prohibition on it, but apparently what one of the mayors was saying is the state has changed the definition of bicycle to include these electric uh, scooters, and it's the law of unintended consequences. They wanted people to drive the electric scooters around the city, which was what it was really designed for, but now people are driving them on the beach, and they're starting to have problems. So other cities, Indian Shores, I think Indian Rocks was working on this, we don't. We may have a problem. The folks who swim up in our portion of the beach, in Bellar Beach, I don't know what you've seen, but I wanted to bring it to our council attention because it seemed to be an issue at the Big C. Well, we we've had a couple issues. Our code says no motorized. So, you know, I guess if we, and I did hear about that uh, statement. The statement yeah. that a bicycle, if it's got a motor on it, doesn't count as a motorized thing like a hoverboard or what was that thing you used to drive around the, the can't even think of the name of it but segway. Uh, huh? a segway yeah segway because <laughs> uh, because you've got you've got people that even come out on our beach with those little uh, segways without arms on them I guess that's what they are uh, uh, so uh, we probably need to find out if that is true, but our ordinance says no motorized. Well, technically, in my mind, those are motorized. They, they, they aren't by people power. So, uh, and we've had a couple complaints about that. 
unfortunately, we haven't caught them because you know we we had the complaints and then you know a deputy goes and looks and they're gone. It's kind of like the dogs. You can't have a dog on the beach, but it happens and the deputy's got to catch it, not you know just because hearsay is doesn't work. So uh, it'll be interesting to hear what feedback I get from from that in the future here about the bicycles. Yeah, another if thing to check. If they're with really doing that, call it a bicycle with a motor. Yes, on it. they are. That's the problem. Well, the, the, again, the idea was in the inner, you know, inner cities where they have like these bicycles, they wanted people to take the electric bicycles and, you know, unintended consequence, yeah, they're taking them, they're taking them up and down the beach, which is what people don't want. Right. Um, something else that, uh, and again, consider this hearsay, it was said by one of the mayors, so it's not verified, but they were saying that the uh, sheriff said that they weren't going to enforce that law. But I have seen the sheriff enforcing the bicycle law in Bel Air Shore, so I, I, I don't know what's correct. I've seen it with my own eyes, them enforcing it, so I don't know that that's correct information that they were given, but maybe next time you're speaking with Captain Liner, see what he has to say, but if we need to pass or tighten up our legislation, again, this is the time to do it. Lynn's got a couple complaints. I didn't even know about that, but the other communities are all complaining about it, and I imagine as the beaches get crowded in the next couple months, we're going to start hearing more and more about this. Unfortunately, if they were riding them responsibly, that would be one thing. It doesn't sound like that's the case. They're speeding up and down, and it's just a matter of time before somebody gets run over, and it'll probably be one of our residents. And, um, so something to think about for, for next time. Um, the other thing is, uh, this is like Jason in Friday the 13th. It just never dies. But the short-term rental bill is back up in Tallahassee. It's um, number HB 219. So just keep an eye on it. I mean, it seems to not quite ever make it over the hump. But you know, if it ever does make it over the hump, folks, um, you know, enjoy the bed and breakfast next door to you because it's going to be a problem. We will not be allowed to control it from our own council. Tallahassee will control it for us. So it's out there. Um, just keep an eye on, on House Bill 219. I, I don't know if there's a Senate com uh, companion to that. And lastly, I had um, we had an update at the Big C from Dr. Cho, who's the advisor to the governor here, and it was about the vaccine program. And I just want to give you a little idea, because you know you may hear stuff, you may read stuff online. This is from the governor's office. Uh, and I, it's only Pinellas County that I really was concerned about. But they're running about eight to 10,000 vaccines per week that they're doing um, here. The problem is we have 250,000 senior citizens, 65 and over, in Pinellas County. So to do the math, that's about 25 weeks to get them the first vaccination, and most of them require two vaccinations. So, you know, I asked him, I said, are we talking close to 50 weeks at this rate? And he said, yes. So it's, you know, now they expect that the vaccine supply is going to get better, and if it does, then this number should come down. But that's where we're at right now. And the thing I had brought up to him, which infuriated me, was I read about, um, there was a guy, he actually was bragging about this. He came from Mexico, he was a, a member of their media, got that, his vaccine in Miami, and he posts it out on social media, thanks America for the vaccine. And I'm like, how could you let this happen? You know, we got senior citizens here who don't have it. So he, he was unaware of it, and I made sure I sent him a copy of it. And uh, so hopefully that kind of abuse won't happen. I know the governor said if you see it, to let them know. Um, I, I hope that the people who do get them will get them, but uh, it looks like it's going to be, you know, a while before we get through even the first group. So that's an update. And if I hear more, I'll let you know. I don't know if you heard anything. Right. Later, the, so. the, to, to get a shot now, you've got to produce a mortgage, a driver's license, to prove that you actually, even if you're a winter visitor, you have to show them a mortgage to get it. it it's all stated. Uh, I was fortunate to get a shot last week. So you don't have a mortgage. Huh? You don't have a mortgage. No, they didn't have a mortgage. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> no, the a property mortgage, tax bill, yeah. No, they wouldn't take property really? tax. They wanted it. The list said a deed, a driver's license, a utility bill. Uh, but uh, they looked at the deed. I don't know what. She didn't really look at it very good, but it didn't matter. I had an ID card, so. Did you, you, did you get yours at Pinellas Mask, or you, did you get it? I got it in at Largo. Oh, Largo, okay. Good, good. The first one. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it is happening, but it's uh, it's a slow rollout right now. Mark? I had my, my wife at her. Okay. For, so it's, for the it's doable. I understand the state has a computerized system now, too. It's a little bit better than when they initially rolled it out. So 
Uh, anyway, we're on it. I mean, the big C is talking about it, so um, that was it was nice to get that update at least directly because you read too much in the newspaper and it's not always correct. So. All right, folks, that's all I had. Um, with that, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So, well, did anybody have any other topics before? I mean, we, this is kind of a hybrid work session slide at this point, work session slides council, but did, did we cover everything? Go ahead. Did you, did you someone say something? I said so, because well, oh. for motion. Motion, okay, so we're gonna adjourn. Okay, uh, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. <laughs>